people make mistakes all the time. People oh, have called me no, Brandon. The, the, the rest of the interaction was just like, I messed this up at <laughs> the very beginning. And now we're just being polite. Hey crew, it's time for another episode of Driven Diaries. Listen closely during the show because at the end, I'll do a pop quiz question. And if you answer correctly in the comments, you'll have a chance to win one of five custom miles per hour seal skin car covers. Now let's unveil the Blackwing and welcome our guest. Hey crew, welcome to another episode of Driven Diaries. And I'm sorry for the tease. I'm obviously not in my Blackwing, yet I just pulled off a cover for my Blackwing. I'm in a Maybach S-Class, and I'm also not in my Demon 170 because it's been raining off and on here, and I'm just not comfortable yet on the barely street legal tires. So I'm joined by James Engelsman of Throttle House, and we will be driving this Maybach S680. I'll start, and then he'll take over and we'll have a good conversation, I hope. What if this is another bait and switch? What if, yeah. it, what if in the next scene it's another car and another person? What if, yeah, we just, it actually is a cardboard box and it just falls apart and you can't drive anything. Maybe that's what a Maybach is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I'm in charge of my own camera and my own audio box. So I, I it's, it's high pressure, especially- You're not the, completely technologically inept. No. You just sort of have your lane and you stay 100%, in your lane. 100%, 100%. Yeah. I try to do the, ma the minimum that I'm required, but the, I, the maximum I'm, I'm allowed. Right, well, yeah, exactly. Cause they yeah. don't want you to screw anything up. James, how did we meet? First interaction. Wow, I'm picking, uh, you told me this yesterday and I'd forgotten, so you should I don't, remember. I don't remember the exact moment, but I What know did you have for breakfast this morning? I had a mixture of, uh, I, I, like, I like a mixture of cereal. I, you I, like, I, like, the, uh, like the fountain drink cereal? Correct, okay. the combination cereal bowl, is, okay. it, it, it actually excites me. <laughs> I get really, I'm like, what's this one gonna taste like? I had the, uh, it's a brand called Kashi, I think. It was okay, like, okay, yeah, Kashi, it was like, yeah. It's like filled shredded wheat things uh -huh. with granola. That's what I had. But I met you at the Honda Accord launch, the new Honda Accord. <laughs> I knew I'd trigger the memory with yes. that. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, so we did meet there, and actually I had my wife with me at the time because she I was did. also doing something and with And she was Accord. super pregnant. Yes, And right. she looked, she held it beautifully. Thank you, good beautiful. recovery on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really well done, but she'll in, watch this I and remember, she'll hate you forever. <laughs> I remember she was about to pop. Yeah, and my was. And my wife was there experiencing her first trimester morning sickness. Uh huh. And that. I didn't actually get to meet your wife, Jill, at no, the time. No, because she was uh, that ill, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, okay, so that's how we met. And, and your wife was a pleasure, by the way. Thank you, I thank remember you. saying to my wife, I said, I've just met the nicest lady. Again, just keep reeling it back. You're just doing really well right now. Yeah, um, ah, I mean it, it's all true. Yeah. Can I just say, first yeah. of all, thank you so much for having me today. Very cool. I, I, I've, you never really know who someone is when you when you watch their YouTube videos. That's true. And the POV, <laughs> which is a, a phrase that I've only ever associated with adult videos until this lot. The POV car YouTubers yeah. are some of the nicest bunch. I, I, I don't know what it is. They, first of all, they all get on like a house on fire. Sure. And they're all just absolutely lovely. So. Well, that's kind of you yeah. to say, if I could diagnose it a little bit, it's yeah. possibly because, and of course I've ruined this by adding another camera there, but it's possibly because there's, there's not really a lot of ego attached to just having a camera facing away from you. 100%. So you're very egotistical is what I'm saying. No, I, I did, <laughs> so what, 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 you know, I feel like you're gonna ask me at some point okay. how Throttle House began. Yes, I will. So at the, at the risk of jumping ahead, yeah. I never wanted to be on camera. I never wanted to be on camera. Really? I, I, ne I, I wanted to help Thomas behind the scenes Bill, you know, he he thought house already existed. Yes. In a small way. Okay. Um, although relative, I think he had about seventeen thousand subscribers when I met Thomas. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think you've got a great narrative voice. I think there's a great thing here, but you're doing a lot of things wrong. And I, I want to help. And I think a few months in or a few weeks in, he decided, let's just try. I think it would be quite fun. And and we did a few videos, and they were terrible. <laughs> and we threw them in the bin. And and. You know those those cars will never see the light of day on our channel. Uh -huh. I think mean, it was an F-Type SVR and a CX3 versus Hyundai Kona video. Oh wow! That never made it to, to, to the to the screen to the tubes. A little off the you know the current roster of vehicles that you that you like well, to review. An, an F-Type I... SVR we would do. Well, that one yes. Um, but, and we'd do a Kona if it was really really popping. I actually like the new design. Did you drive the Kona N? Uh, no, we haven't done a Kona N. Just a little little ludicrous. Okay, I, I want to try that. Made, but you should try it. But anyway, the long story short, I, I, um, I, I'm with you in that level of just being so humble and having no ego because I never wanted to be on camera either. And I still hate my face. And if Thomas was here right now, he would be telling the audience that I have an A-roll face, which is the first time you watch an edit. And it's sort of this like cringing, 
I can't do it because I've never seen it. But he videos it sometimes. And I have to put the camera away. I I hate watching ourselves. Oh, well, okay. I think that's why people. I, I have waiting for the success to come for me. But I think that's why people like you, people like Doug DeMuro, who who aren't necessarily in it for the the appeal and in no, it for Doug the... as well. <laughs> that when I finally met, he was just the loveliest guy. Yeah, really. You know, you want to have dartboards. It, it, it's, <laughs> sometimes it feels like this dog eat dog world of YouTube. It's not the case. And when we first started, I was so excited. I thought we're going to collaborate with everyone. Yes. We're going to make such creative magic with yeah. everyone. And it didn't work out that way. Well, like, you find out that everyone's very busy. Yeah, everyone's very busy. <laughs> Trying to do their own thing. Yeah, it's a tough job that you'll never get any sympathy for. Yeah. Because you're... Which is why I was so thankful that yeah. I could actually find some time with you to, to get you in the car and, and I, know, I drove here two hours today in, a, in an Audi S8. Yes. Which is not dissimilar no. to this car. It, it's not, but wait till you get to the back seat, which, you know, Briefly, you'll at least have some time back there and just, just enjoy the Maybach mode because yeah. the ride quality is pretty great. But I don't want to mess with you. I know this is an interview format, so feel free. I just kind of want to hang out. It's, it's so loosely an interview format. Oh, good, it's okay. more, li more like a chat. But yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not nervous at all. You know, I can get the job. I, I did want to talk about you know how you and Thomas met, right? Because you said he had already got Throttle House started, but how did you guys actually meet? So depending on what edition of the Bible you buy, there's different, different stories, but... Uh -huh. The, the long and short of it, the first time we ever laid eyes on each other, do, 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 I mean, I'm picturing do, right do, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. was at an MX-5 meet. Okay. So that song is actually appropriate. Um, but I'd, I'd been messaging him. I reached out to him because um, I'd enjoyed his channel. And, and How we, did I not know he had an MX-5? He had an NC, because he's ashamed of it, because he had the third generation NC. What's the, wrong with the NC? The boat. No, he'll, he'll fight that battle. Oh my gosh, but, it's I, got a great gearbox. It's a great car, it can be had at a discount these days. The steering is arguably better. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm speaking for Thomas here, because he's not here. He would be saying, well, the steering's better than the ND. <laughs> he can tell me for himself yeah, next week. Yeah, he, but he, I'll give him that. It probably yeah. is a little bit better. But yeah, so we met at the MX-5 thing, and uh, he, he said to me, you know, I said to him, I can help you, I've got time. And he said, well, why do you have time? And I said, I recently came. <laughs> That's such a good question. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Because I'm homeless. Uh, well, I mean, I, the, the, the key thing here is I offered to help him for free, full, okay. full time. Immediately. Sure, that's that's suspicious. And because I, I was in between, I, I had previously run a small business that that I'd parted from amicably. Okay. And I had this like cushion of time where I wanted to just. I had traveled. I went to Australia and Hong Kong, and and then I came back and I found myself a little bit bored, mm -hmm. and I wanted it. I always loved cars, and I was and I was scared I, I was risk averse and I didn't want to convert a hobby into a job and, and I realized okay well I, I like video games and I like you know going I don't know I like driving but yes. I, and I, 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 made, I took the jump I took the leap and we, we started working together and I think about six months later he was like okay I feel bad I gotta pay you now um, actually no I said it would be six months I think it, within three months he folded just being a nice Canadian I've had, I've had a similar experience with, with someone who reached out to me and said they'd work for free doing my thumbnails. And then I quickly realized, one, they're, they're way more qualified than just doing my thumbnails. And two, like, I'm definitely not going to let them work for free. But I think that's, that's a, another good example of like, hey, just, just asking someone who you, you're interested in what they do, if they need help. Or you yeah. had no, I imagine you didn't have the vision of what Throttle House is right now, the origin of your no, meeting, right? No, but I thought like, it would be a fun, every Wednesday we just do some small thing in a field, which is kind of what it is now, but sure. then the rest of the week is filled up. Right. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, you've got the extra Throttle House stuff, you've got the, the big features, I mean, yeah, the things yeah. you travel for, yeah. It's, be, it's, it's, a, it's become a bit of a journey, and now we have a team, and I, and I think that was a big differentiator for us and a big step because when we entered the world of car YouTube, yeah. it was it was this idea that look at how little I can do for how many views and people I can get. And, sure. and, and you know, this was something that like Doug excelled at. It was this, and was very proud of and, and has reason to be. It's this minimum input, maximum output yeah. thing. But we, because we were sort of going heavy on the production side and we were trying to come up with narratives and I, we did an intro skit at the beginning of one of the videos and we were like, oh, down we're gonna have to do this now every time yeah it became hard work and, sure. we, and we, we realized that if there was any longevity to throttle house it would be that we were enjoying it we'd have to enjoy our time and not hate each other and sleep right. fine so we introduced the team and the team is amazing and throttle house would not be where it was if it wasn't for carson harris and joey and dan and previously greg I, and i think we we are as much a product of our team as we are the two of us and they allow us to 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 be awake and happy enough and figure out writing and cars and stuff that, that it can be a good 
channel. I, I love that. I, I love yeah. the camaraderie and I love the fact that you need all the different inputs to have the final product be as good as it is. Yeah, and they work their nuts off. This isn't a team that's like chilling out. I, yeah. Our mantra, if we, you know how like Google has don't be evil as their mantra? Yeah, that's right. Ours is don't kill Carsten because <laughs> he just works so hard sure. and so diligently. And he'll just take it, is what I'm yeah, imagining. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. works silently. You never yeah. know what's going on and suddenly you'll get an edit through and you'll be like, are you okay, Carsten? <laughs> this is really good and it's only been 40 hours. Did you sleep? You just so, feed food through under the door still. Yeah. And, yeah. But, it's, but obviously it creates challenges. You know, to, yeah. We pay everyone at a competitive rate in Toronto yeah. and that, anyone who knows anything about Toronto means it's not San Francisco, but it's, it's expensive it's and true. running Throttle House is not a small thing. Yeah. So... Uh, well, and, and I was just going to say, like, the, the fact that you early on said, hey, we want this to be better production quality, yeah, a little more effort, but you, you to see that in the final product compared yeah. to the minimum effort and, you know, maximum views. I, I had a similar uh, sort of trajectory with what I was doing because I, I started looking at, you know, POV channels doing, first it was Amos, you know, the Topher doing his stuff and going like, this doesn't look like a whole lot of effort. You got a camera, one camera angle, you're not switching angles, right. you're kind of just like, talking through what you're experiencing that seems pretty cool but over time i went well but i would like more out of it and so i started adding another camera angle and i started adding like b-roll and covering for for edits or cuts yeah. and things and so I, I still am far from having the full team that's, but good, that's good to know because I'm, I'm so jealous of you guys well, I, I remember speaking to you um you know chris and yes and, and ted be they, jealous of them Definitely well, he was like, we filmed that. five videos this morning, and it was like 1 p.m. I was like, what? I still am jealous of that kind of output. I, I don't have the capacity to do that kind of thing. Well, certainly not with two young kids. Um, but I, I, I can't imagine. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on the second child. <laughs> thank you, way. thank you. Yeah, and I mean, congrats on your first. But uh, I don't have the capacity to do that, but it's, it's something to be jealous of, the way that they can kind of crank stuff out. For me, it was like I needed to be more diligent about one video just trying to get something as good as I could get it because I'm definitely a perfectionist yeah. and it has shot me in the foot a number of times. Well, it's that 80-20 rule, isn't it? It's like just, you, if you can do it to the 80% mark and then move on, yeah. it's better than 100%ing it. But I mean, they still maintain quality. I, Topher and Toe, I think I love the stuff they put out. They do. It is very engaging throughout, which again, they're just better than me is what I'm saying, <laughs> is, is what I'm coming No, from. listen, the, the important thing is to be honest and be authentic. And I think they re that comes across in all of your videos. You find your strengths. Yeah, I, that, the audience isn't silly. They know when you're when you're, you're not passionate about something, and, and you know even if it makes for a slightly more boring video, screaming and being super excited every time you accelerate in a in a Kona non n. Yes, it's not going to provide that 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 relative you know. Oh, okay. They were excited in an LFA, but they're just as excited in a Kona. What's, sure. what's going on? Here? Well, that's why I knew I couldn't BS it long enough driving the you know the humdrum vehicles. There are some humdrum vehicles that I get very excited about, right? But I knew I needed to sort of niche it to luxury performance, you know, trucks, exciting things because I couldn't fake it. Yes. I'd need to be at least some level excited, right? Like mm. you get jaded in this industry, but uh, to still be excited about some new feature some some new spin on something is is important in what we do well we're, we're a bit lucky because we've we've carved ourselves out as a, as a car enthusiasm channel yes rather than a consumer advice channel and right. sometimes when people are a bit upset because they want us to do the 1.5 liter trim of the accord and because they, they're not sure about buying it and they trust us but that's but, not your audience and there's so. not enough hours in the day okay. related to producing throttle house videos what's the toughest part about making them you can speak on your behalf you can speak on your team's behalf what What's what makes it challenging? So, uh, where we every time we can make something easier, we we shoot for something bigger and harder. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, don't you laugh? That's very naughty. It's, it's very much like <laughs> what I do. But um, so so, everyone on the team has a tough job and different times. We have this sort of concept, which is lean into the chill because whatever job our is our, our job is for throttle house. Yeah. It, there's moments where it's really intense and moments where it's chill. And right. if you're gonna be okay and have a balance in life, you have to, when it's chill, lean into it. Okay. So I'm on the logistics side mostly. Um, you know, obviously other than getting to grips with the car and understanding what we're gonna say right. and how we're gonna approach it. Planning is always before the trip. So that's very hard and very stressful. Uh -huh. So for me, the planning stage then the actual filming week is crazy intense. It feels like we go to war. Every that, That's where everyone's job's intensity peaks. Sure. Uh, but when I get home, it's more of like a chill situation while they're gathering all the footage and the editing, and that's when it's difficult for the editing but team. But of course, reminding yourself that you have a screaming child that's that's going to need attention. I actually have the best child. She's so well-behaved. Oh my gosh. She's, she's, she's you were so, saying you were jealous of me making videos? 
Yeah, I've yeah. got kids that need a lot of attention. They're lovely children. I love them with all my heart, but they do need a lot of attention. I, I, I currently at this stage, she goes through stages, but she's six months old right now, and I'm very lucky. Oh, um, she sleeps she, through the night. She sleeps through the night. Come on, James. <laughs> you feel like you we need got... to get out of the car now. Um, well, I don't want to get out. I suddenly started pouring. Well, now, now you need to get out. This just, I want maximum effect of you feeling like you've said the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, so the, the hardest part is everyone has their own difficult part. I think, like all things, it's when things go wrong. You know, when when it's the wrong car that shows up, or something goes wrong with the car, and, yeah. and uh, you know, we, we and you've planned all for X and Y. Exactly, happens yeah. And, you go. and these trips are not cheap. You know, not not even counting the insurance and the visas we need to come yeah. through to the states with all our gear mm-hmm. and the carne and all that garbage, Airbnbs and flights. Like we'll often be thirteen to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars into a trip oh. before we even pack our bag to go on it. Wow. So. If the Keystone, you know, if the Keystone car of that trip doesn't work out, this is California. This, what's going on? I don't know. Even like today wasn't supposed to rain. Like yeah. it was saying, ah, it might rain, but it's probably not going to. I'm glad we're not on a demon. Right? I drove us into this rain spell, so you can blame me for That's this. That's okay. Yeah. But yeah, so there's, it's expensive and it's difficult. However, part of the reason we have a team, part of the reason we up production and went. Top Gear style, yes. was because we had this thing where we just, no matter whether it makes money or whether it does the views we want it to do or grows the channel we want it to be a video that we're proud of the moment we press publish well and, and as, a, yeah. as a fan of your content uh, I can say that we feel that as people who watch your content we can feel that, that you guys have have said kind of to, to hell with loading up on sponsorships 10 an episode yeah, and we, doing we do to, what we need yeah we do you do it need. exactly what you need to, to keep the lights on but my wife doesn't watch Throttle House <laughs> My mum watches maybe the first minute and either falls asleep or oh. so so I for some reason have not the people close to me you know what it actually works out because if I want to break from from work for a minute the people close to me have no idea what's going on in the exactly. world of podcasts. They're a completely different flavor. And now here's another part where I can be jealous of you. But you can be jealous of me a little bit for this, but I can yeah. be jealous of you. But, you know, my wife does car content. So like there's no escaping talking about right. cars. Right. But along with that comes like we can collaborate on things. I can drive her to events and film it with her. Like there are certain things that come that are good with that, but there is no escape. There's yeah. always cars in our house. It's an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Why? Because I also have a work wife. His name's Thomas. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're just always on the phone. Our phones are just a constant radio walkie-talkie thing yes. to each other at yeah. all times. So, but yeah. I like that lean into the chill. I, I think that's a great philosophy. And and though not labeled the same way in my own head, I do I follow that practice. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, then then you're always at some level of tension no, I, and, and you'll burn and, out. And it spikes, yeah. Yes. The job spikes in intensity. So, you know, I'll have, you know, Joey sort of works directly with me as logistics and he'll say, well, what have I got to do today? And I'll be like, you know what? Chill out. <laughs> We've got this organized. We're two weeks away from this. And that's got to be great for you to feel like you can say that. Yeah, you? it's re- it's the eye of the storm. It's yeah. very rare that something's about to come go down. Right. But, you know, but it's just every trip we do is anarchy. It's chaos. Like in the Cybertruck video we did recently, when we got on the plane, yeah. we didn't have a Cybertruck organized. And I think there's this idea that we have these like written videos right. and everything. No, we had no idea what we were doing with the Cybertruck. And, and even the chapter titles on the Cybertruck, we came up with the second morning of that trip oh and then gosh. did the fridge magnets on the car. Like it, we just- Dude, And you would never tell. You'd never yeah. be able to tell. Well, I think a, lot, a question we get a lot of the times is, is how much of it is written. Mm. And the answer is the intro skit. It's obviously something we have to plan for. Sure. Even though sometimes it gets a bit ad-libbed. And then the, any voiceover you hear is is us something we've written down it's after the fact. Yeah, right. But the actual review on the day, the walking around, the talking to each other, nothing is nothing is scripted. It's all it's all off the cuff. And that's that's pretty awesome. And I so I mean you've mentioned Top Gear at least once during our conversation. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would like to say, and I could say it as well, like watching your stuff is like watching old Top Gear, yeah. right? So, but wh- how much of as you guys were starting out, did you go like? Not to not to emulate them exactly, but to go like, hey, we did you like Top Gear? Did you guys enjoy watching so, Top Gear? I, I like Top Gear. I, it was on Dave in England all the time. It was on BBC obviously when it ran on its yeah. first night, but then it was just on Dave. I haven't watched much Top Gear. Interesting. And Thomas and Carsten are both obsessed with Top Gear, <laughs> so we we run into this like Simpsons did it thing. Where I'll say like, oh, we could do this and then this, and, and, then, like, oh, and Thomas would d- like Jeremy did that, oh. and I'd be like, well, that's not fair. Yeah, especially because it's just a sincere thought that just yeah. came to mind. Yeah, so for we you. come up on it honestly, which just tells you there's only so many ways to skin it, of to course. skin a cat in terms of car content. And the moment you you you, you 
inject like humor and voiceover into it, then right. suddenly you're top gear no matter what you do. But voiceover as a storytelling technique, especially on these road trip videos, it's right. the only, only way to do it. So, yeah, and I, I wanted to yeah. clarify, like I see Top Gear and what you do not as like, oh, they're just rehashing a Top Gear strategy or, or topic or whatever, but I see it in the, in the, um, in the genuine fun you guys seem to be having on camera, yeah, and in the way that things come together for what feel like very special episodes, like you feel like something magnanimous is happening, and you're you're kind of watching it unfold. It's a good word, magnanimous. In, in a YouTube video, and that's that's just sort of it's yeah. unique in our in our sphere of influence. But I think that is what the purity of YouTube is. Like when I think of my favorite YouTube videos, going back to the beginning, yeah, it was things that resulted in like pure, real human moments that somehow they weren't on the news and yes. they weren't on channel four yeah it was only because that one person decided to open a flip camera and film it and that's what i love happening upon when we do our things and that that's why we've sort of really got a feel for these adventure videos like tofu and schnitz are the two 80s hatchbacks we drove across uh -huh, the desert yes. that was a mind-blowing four days yeah, it, yeah. it was the hardest four days i think we've ever done mm -hmm. that one middle day where we woke up in Sedona and found ourselves in the snow in Flagstaff yeah. halfway. And then by the end, we were in the Grand Canyon at night. And then the flood warnings we found on our phone and then had to go back up through the Grand Canyon. Stressful, for sure. It's crazy stressful. Yeah. I've never had the burger we had at the end of that day. It could have been, uh, I could have found it on the floor and it would have still been the best tasting burger we ever had. And, and we, we actually, you know, we, we couldn't leave everything on camera because it would have been seven hour episodes. Yeah, right. But one of the, it was, there were, when you get really tired, do you ever have, when you get grateful for stuff and you oh, get, yeah. and you get teary. Yeah. So, so when <laughs> because we Because you've got nothing left. Yeah, yeah. you've got nothing, but you, yeah. like someone does an act of kindness in yeah. this cruel world yes. and you end up feeling like there's something, anyway, so w while we were queuing up for our, our burger at 1 a.m. at the end of that day, yeah. the forerunner behind me turned off his headlights because he realized that they were going they were hitting our wing mirrors because we were so low and you started crying <laughs> i didn't start crying but we did we did buy his burger oh yeah but would i have done that had i seen the uh i think you should leave scene of buying 55 burgers 55 fries 55 shakes 50 because then then we would have been screwed but yeah but yeah we bought his burger and it was just like a really nice end to the day i love that yeah that's great but like i said it's it's from the viewer's experience we we kind of feel that with you and and i mean even as you said someone pulled up the flip phone it made me it reminded me of when you were in the Cybertruck video and Thomas just pulled out the camera and you're just trying to get this crazy all-wheel steering I vehicle. I still to this day don't understand what, what was happening that was not allowing me to clear that. And I, I don't know how he got in there. I wish I could have switched seats with him to see how he did it. I, I just, we like, I think everyone you saw in the comments were just sort of like, we felt with you in that moment. And it's so cool that you, you're not afraid of despite all the production quality and all the, the effort you do to have like a really polished video, you're not afraid of throwing something very real in there. And that's something that I can relate with, you know, in, in a POV video. It's, yeah, sort of it's just as like, it happens. It's as it happens. We're watching you live. Yes. And I'm just talking you through and sometimes I have no words or in so, other yeah. times uh, my words are jarbled before they get out of my mouth. Oftentimes that happens. But, you know, in your case, it was just something that you were like, this is so human. Like, I can't figure this out. And it was hilarious. And yeah. it was so good. But yeah, the POV stuff really creates real moments. Like, I remember... You remember things that happen in people's POVs. Hmm. I remember Matt Farah did a one take when someone had a log in the. They were dragging a log <laughs> round the corner on the on the canyon yes. road, yeah. and it was madness. I'll never forget that. How would you share advice with someone who's just starting out, has a vision for something, or maybe doesn't have that vision yet, but just knows they want to make car videos? What would you say to them? Um, I think you know, based on what we were saying before, it's this this idea of don't underestimate your audience, because people, you know. It's so easy to say, oh, it's a bunch of 14 year olds yeah. or this. And, and, you know, for the record, we can see our audience numbers. I think in the middle, we're sort of 25 to 40 is our biggest range. Sure. But people of all ages watch Shot House. Mm -hmm. but, but oftentimes people just assume, oh, it's a bunch of 14 year olds. Remember what you were like when you were 14? 14 year olds are smart. Yes. They're good. Like, you know, 13 year olds in my school were destroying adults in chess. <laughs> so I think no matter what age, just understand that the audience watching, talk to them as though it's you. Yeah. Don't patronize, don't condescend. If you don't know something, you know, be real with it. Yeah. You know, when I joined Throttle House, Thomas was a track rat. And I had, a, I had what I would call a pretty casual uh, obsession with cars, yeah. casual obsession. Like yes. I, I, you know, I loved car spotting, I understood cars. Right. But I, I realized that I was a student of cars and mm. I, we still are. Yeah. And I think that there's this like pressure to, to come across all knowing immediately. It's not required. So I think those two things really, like be okay with learning as you go along 
and don't underestimate your audience. And if you're doing a specialized vehicle like that Forerunner in front of us, yeah. there are 50,000 people on the Forerunner forum that know way more than you. <laughs> and let them discuss the intricate mo details yes. of, of Forerunners and this switch and that, and you know, maybe stick to, stick to what you know. But I love yeah. that. And I, I've already made a bumper sticker in my head from what you just said, be a student of cars. And yeah. I think that's, that's such solid advice uh, and it's, encapsulates better than the rant that I was going to have, which is both basically just sort of like what you said in terms of grow, grow with with the type of content you would enjoy watching, 100%. and and listen to your audience in terms of them picking up on things. Hey, I really love how you do this. Yes, and and that might actually reveal something to you about. Oh, I didn't realize I love doing that as much as as much as they see that I love doing it. I'm going to do more of that and be able to be sculpted by what your audience is doing to a, to a degree, right? If they say, hey, we just want to see more leg and that's just not what you're feeling, then maybe don't do that. I actually have a little story that I might want to share Please about do. the more leg thing. Please do. But I just, bef before I get to that, though, yeah. just a word of caution as well on the content side sure. is when you're making content, you have these metrics, you have YouTube studio and Instagram followers and it can run your life. The mm. graphs can run your life. And I, I, I had this with my first business before Throttle House, so I managed to sort of get over it and, and and make peace with it yeah but if it's ruining you and you're not getting enough out of it there are other jobs and you haven't got to be i know it's really popular to be a content creator but there's other stuff that you probably will get more out of and potentially earn more i think it's important yeah. before we leave that topic i think it's important that people hear that from you right yes. hear that from you and thomas because what they see is you guys, frankly, making a ton of content yeah. and working yourselves very hard, working your team very hard, and they think that that's the only way to make it work. And no. what they're gonna encounter is exactly what you said, likely burnout and potentially wanting to leave whatever this ambition that you had entirely. Back Definitely. to more fun yeah. stuff. So the next thing I wanted to ask you, what are the vehicles you own? I, I I technically have four, but I really only have three. Mm -hmm. the that's fourth, like me. The, the right. four, yeah, the fourth is Tofu, which is the 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 AE eighty six Corolla, right? Okay. Which is, is it's a team car, and it's you know it's Carsten's dream car, and Harrison's been living with it, and we all we're all sharing the joy <laughs> shared around, yeah, yeah, the joy that is something in Japanese, I yeah. guess. Um, so I own a, a twenty twenty three MX five, mm -hmm. a twenty twenty four Golf R, uh, and a two thousand four Toyota Century V twelve. Right, the Golf R replaced the A4, is that the right? The S4, yeah. S4, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's the S4. Don't leave that S out. I'm sorry, I'm- Makes I, all the difference, I, now I, you're I, in a I'm V6. Tr I'm no. triggered because I used to have a TTS. Oh, and, okay. And it, and, and it was, a, T, a TT was always considered a, a feminine car, which by oh, the way, right. I don't believe any car is feminine or masculine. Right, hey, I had a GTI and it was yeah. constantly like, oh, you drive the rabbit, you drive the feminine car. Right, yeah, so, so, I, get it. so I had to say it's a TTS. Mm -hmm. So now when someone says A4, I'm like, I'll fight you. But yeah, so those are my cars and they sort of, the, the, the Century is a novelty that I probably wouldn't have in my life if it weren't for Throttle House. Um, and it's so cool. But I, but I maintain that I would have a Golf R MX-5 combo regardless of whether I was in Throttle House or not. I think that's okay. such a perfect combination. Yes. Would, do, am I going to regret that I should have waited one more year to switch my 2016 MX-5 for the new 2024? <laughs> Probably. I'll live with that regret. That's okay. Yes. Uh, and, and maybe I'll switch at some point, but I haven't tried it yet. So. That's a, it's yeah. a good collection. You've got the comfort, you've got the little sporty, and then you've got the like all-wheel drive performance in any weather kind of. Yeah, exactly. That's a exactly. good spread. And I mean, how often are you having a press car in the mix with all those different cars? Not as often as you think, actually. We, we, is it, is it especially in winter, I imagine. Yeah, not as many press yeah. Cars. So, so we, you know, if, if you've seen Throttle House content, sometimes it's a dealer car or an owner car. In right. which case, we have the car for a day or two. Okay. Um, but I would say probably one week out of the month, I have a press car. Got it. Okay. Yeah, because that's the only way to get a hold of that car. Yeah, that's that's not often. Yeah, but I mean, it but it does mean that that I don't put that many miles on my own cars. I, you know, the, the MX Five I bought brand new at the beginning of last year, and I think I've probably done three and a half thousand kilometers on it. Is Two, there any part of you that's just, you feel guilty not putting miles in your cars? Or is no, it just sort of like, I, these are my cars, I love getting yeah. to enjoy them whenever and wherever I want. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I, I don't, there's no guilt associated. The only good. guilt I would have is if I bought a very high priced, low mileage car that's sensitive to mileage. And then every mile you do, you feel guilty on. What would you do with three extra hours in your day? Three extra hours in my day. And, I mean, you could use it however you want. You could do more work. You could spend time with family, but- No, I, mean, I wouldn't do more work. Good. Um, uh, 
I'd probably try and gain back some of the hobbies that I've not been able to do as a result of this job and having a child. Which are? I'd, pr I'd play more video games. Okay. Um, I, I would I'd play different video games. The games I play right now are ones that I can do a 15, 20 minute session of. Okay. But I miss the longer form stuff where you suddenly have lost three hours. Those, I'd do those, you know, like, Age of Empires, no rush, 50 minutes. You would get along so well, well with my best friend because he, he literally has a YouTube channel about yeah. so being a video game well, now he's my best friend. You yeah, just exactly. lost a best friend. I'm sorry. That's a terrible play I, to make. I've actually shared two of my best friends with other best friends. They became best friends and I'm now just the, the third or fourth wheel at a certain point. Um, you can start collecting a commission at some point. I so. should. James, now we've moved on to what typically makes more sense because I'm usually piloting my Blackwing or most often I'm in the passenger seat and can therefore look at the questions as I'm asking them to you. But in the Blackwing, I do a no lift shift and that's saving time not having to lift off the throttle as you change your gear. It's a scary feature that. I always... It's an awesome feature, but yes, the first time you do it, you think you're gonna break something. And the yeah. second time you do it, you still think you're gonna break something. Um, so this is just the rapid fire question and answer section. And every interviewee has failed at this not of their own fault, it just really, I, I lead into it as well, but they fail at, at giving me the, the quickest thing that comes to their mind and we move on to the next question. It just evolves into let's talk about it. I'm not going to fail. So I want to challenge you yeah, yeah. as quick as you can, okay? Yeah. Are you ready? What's the craziest thing you've ever done for a photo? Oh, interesting. So if I have to, th oh, I see I've Could be failed. a thumbnail, yeah, you've already failed. Uh, could be a thumbnail, and I have to, of course, explain the question, so I've already failed as well. Could be a thumbnail, could be just like in life for a photo with your family, whatever. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Nothing that crazy, nothing that crazy. Nothing that crazy? No. Okay, fine, that's your answer, you suck. Okay, next question. What's the most awkward interaction of your life? And if you say it's this video, then I'm going to eject you from the seat. Second to this video, um, one thing that comes, my throttle house life? Could be your life, it, personal life, throttle house life. You okay. can you can refine it. No, no, I have want. the answer. I can rapidly come up with the answer, okay. but it's not a rapid answer. Is that okay? Go for it. All right. So you know, at the very beginning, uh, when we were starting throttle house, you, you sort of figure out your way with the manufacturers, and they start lending you cars. Yes. But not all of them do. And and we there was a halfway phase where we had some of them, but we didn't have some of them. And Porsche was our holy grail. We really okay. wanted to land local Porsche. Yes, uh, and good our, luck. And our rep, and he doesn't know this story, or he does, and he was very polite. <laughs> our rep, um, actually it's not Porsche, it's not any other brand, it's not this guy, don't find him. <laughs> he, he has a French name, uh, and it's it's name, son, a saint name, right? Okay, so yes. I'm gonna use a fake name for this moment, and it's, it's uh, uh, Jean, Saint Sebastian. Okay. Right? And yes. I and I and we went to the auto show, which is a place where you can meet your PR reps for the first time yes. and shake their hand. So I went up to Jean Saint Sebastian and I was nervous and I said, Hi Sebastian, James from Frosty House. And he's like, It's Jean, but thanks. And I was like, Is it? Oh my god, it is. It's the other way around. And um, I would like a car now. Oh, yeah, you're never gonna give me ever. We didn't get a Porsche for two and a half years after that. So, yeah. But that such, was a, such so a benign, awkward. like, uh, like, look, people make mistakes all the time. People oh, have called me no, Brandon. The, the, the rest of the interaction was just like, I messed this up at <laughs> yes. the very beginning. And now we're just being polite. Okay, next question. What's the fastest you've ever driven? Oh, um, I don't know. But, but the fastest I've been... The first time I went the fastest I've been okay. was when I had in my Audi TTS. And I went 145 miles an hour. I've probably been much faster since in SVJs and plaids, but, but probably felt at the time. Yeah, like... memorably, I went to 145. I just bought it. I couldn't believe I owned this car, <laughs> and I was 145 slapping the dash on the M1 going up north to Nottingham, um, and I think, yeah, it was just it was just ridiculously fast. And that's just a delible memory for you. And, oh, like I've, no, I've never done it since because it's so stupid to do. <laughs> the trees do fly past you faster, but yes. you're breaking so many laws. Yes. I, you know, I was I was fine in the end, but yeah. That's and just... you're misplacing terror for joy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And next question: What other names did you and Thomas consider? I guess so. So it was Thomas who had already had Throttle House going. Yeah, do you so, know from him anecdotally what other names he'd considered before he settled on Throttle no, House? Or it, did you come in and go, we should rename this? So I wanted to rename it, but yeah. it, it, it was one of those things where it felt late. He had mm. already had, by the time I joined properly, he had 23,000 subscribers. Yeah. And I was like, it's too, it's too, we've already got the name, which is yeah. now you think about it compared to whatever we're at now, almost 3 million. Yeah. It, it, that was a very early stage. We could have renamed it. 
But yeah, he, he before me, it was E46 reviews with TH, and then it was, I think, reviews with TH. But oh, I, right. I, oh. the truth be told, I don't think either of us like it that much. And it's fine now because it's become... <laughs> you have no choice it's now. It's become us, you know. Yeah. It's one of those things where you meet someone, you know, called... Agatha and you're like oh that's a weird name but they become their personality and yes. at some point you don't care what their name is right. so I think that's what Throttle House is now but like yeah I think there were times where we were trying but we haven't thought of anything better it's really hard to come up with a name and, it's and, very difficult you know Extra Throttle House is sort of uh, uh, it doesn't count well but and we, Throttle Clubhouse and Throttle Clubhouse Club, you kind of inserted that that in, worked, that out, worked out really yeah. well but I think I th we are talking about one day doing another channel that maybe we're not potentially the personalities of but adding it to our portfolio okay. of channels. And we are trying to come up with a name from complete fresh, and it is impossibly hard. It's super difficult. Yeah. I, I, he used his initials, I used my name. Your, in name, mine. So your was, name is we just went with the, brilliant. It was the Miles lowest barrier hour? of, yeah, it was, it was so easy. You're born for this. Hey, I came up with it when I was 16. I was like, hey, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with this, yeah. but hey, my name works perfectly for car stuff what car is your dream car to own or drive i have found myself in the last two years being very obsessed with the mark one ford gt and that was the right answer everyone oh, oh five, oh six. i didn't pay him anything to say that because it happens to be my dream car to own and, and well people think that it implanted which you've actually driven i've I'm driven very it and spun out in um not jealous I, of that but i am jealous of you know the driving it in a, yeah. in a straight manner you've never driven it never driven it at all. it's your dream car dream car well here's the good news it's nice to drive. <laughs> the first to second shift in that car is the most satisfying. I don't know what it is. Just that movement yes. is beautiful, which is good because that's the only shift you're ever going to do. Because I think it red lines in first gear at like 63 miles an hour. Good so. lord! So unless you have a uh, full-on air, you know, airport yeah. runway, and even then you got to take you be real careful. Because <laughs> that's that's the situation that you were, or yeah, you were on it, a, a long straight, right? I was on the straight, but there were wall I don't know how we didn't hit that wall. And I, and it's funny. I I realized. It's nothing to do with my health. I wasn't worried about my injury, personal injury. Yeah. It was, I'm about to wreck this car. And every time there's ever been a moment like that. That is a car enthusiast like yeah. fear though, by the way. Like just for you to think about the car before you're on the same But I also didn't want to become the channel that stuffed a Ford GT. Uh, yeah, so okay. now we've become the ones that almost, almost did. stuffed it. And that is a very important distinction. <laughs> All right, now we've arrived at your opportunity to win a miles per hour custom seal skin car cover. You're gonna answer this question in the comments, and if you get it right, you'll have a chance to win. If you don't win, it's okay though. You can still get your own custom seal skin car cover. It's not gonna be the miles per hour branded one, but it's still gonna be cool. And you'll get a discount of 15% off that with the link in my description. So here's the question. I pulled out a phrase that James had said during our conversation, and just in my mind thought, this would be great on a bumper sticker. What phrase did he share when talking about advice for people who are just kind of getting started producing car content. Answer that and have your chance to win. And I saved James driving this car until the last possible moment, really because I wanted him to not derail his train of thought because he has good things to say. And V12 ah, smooth. has good things to sound. Yeah. Good things to sound. Good things to sound. I'm I'm sticking with that. That's fine. It's it's funny getting out of the S8 because it's kind of a competitor to this in some ways, and it's not as fancy, but the S8 is the underdog of this group, and I, I love the S8. The S8's fantastic. But this does immediately feel more luxe, uh, the, the sort of brake pedal. And the, the waft. The waft, yeah, more waft. But not the insulation, like the sound, it's, it's just as quiet in the yeah. S8. But anyway, I feel like I've, I've taken us off track. Well, that's because you're driving now. Are we doing, is this a review? Or was this supposed to be a review? If, you've, <laughs> if this was supposed to be a Maybach S680 review, you've done a terrible job. <laughs> I've done a horrible job. There's yeah. a Cybertruck. Ooh, in black? That's the first, like, Okay, obviously wrapped. Should we chase but, him down? Yeah, chase him, obviously. It's so reflective still. Look at that. Hello! <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's yeah, nice. it's, oh, it's different wheels as well. Yeah. Oh, no, so those are just the uh, normal wheels with the, with the, the things off? taken off. Yeah, I know that because while driving the Cybertruck, um, one of the cub caps that I was driving came off. Should we race him off the line? Let's do it. Are we allowed to do that? My uh, video. Unrelated to the Cybertruck, I'm going to accelerate here. The transmission hated that. Because it was this bloody auto start stop there. Oh, I think the engine was off. Yeah. Anyway, he's off. He's he, fast. Right? Those rear seats are nice though. They're, yeah, which you spent no time in. He so I spent time James in James denied one driving the vehicle, 
uh, and two, spending any time in the rear of the cabin. It I was just, like I was offering him candy. I to just get want into to my enjoy car. your company. I don't need to be in the back or drive the car. I spun that well, nicely done. Yeah. My conclusion on this interview is thank you, James, no. for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. And guys, if you haven't seen Throttle House, why are you even watching my channel? Uh, you got to go see his stuff on Throttle House. Make sure you go follow him there. And Extra Throttle House and this. The guys at Extra Throttle House do a better job. All of it's good. They do. Can we best. say that? All of it's good. And and your advice for for car content creators and, and people who want to do this is is also good. So thank you for sharing that with us. Does it do launch control? <laughs> no. no. It's a Maybach. We Honestly. have we have we have Maybach mode and we have sport. There is a sport mode yeah. in this vehicle, which is kind of shocking. Sport mode for the end. Here we go. Let's do it. Okay. Ready? Sport mode. you have to watch Silicon Valley. Yes. Or if you don't, just watch the one scene where they come out with the middle out compression algorithm concept. <laughs> that one that scene one is amazing. one of the best scenes yes. of all times in any film. Agreed. Any, any TV. Yes. Uh, okay, so... That's the takeaway from this interview with That's James. the takeaway. I wanted there to be something more profound, but it's just the middle out.